Hi, welcome to Circle Time Magazine. I'm one of your hosts, Virginia C. And I'm your other host, Dawn Williams. Circle Time Magazine is a professional development talk show for early childhood educators. This is the time for us to gather and have a circle time of our own. That's right. Today is all about math games. Yay. We are partnering with Xeno, which is an organization all about math games. We'll be talking about games and ways you can measure the results of games. And we'll talk a lot about measurement in early childhood. And one of the challenges is increasing the amount of explicit math activities in early learning environments. And games is one of the ways that makes math fun and accessible. And once kids get the hang of it, they're practicing math very frequently. Mm -hmm. So one of our objectives is to increase the amount of math learning opportunities through games. Another learning objective is to learn about how young children understand measurement concepts. So let's get started. Our first guest is Manuela Crawley. She is the Assistant Director of Early Learning at Zeno. Manuela has a wealth of experience in the education field. She is a former math teacher, math coach, and writes and develops early learning math curriculum. Hi, Manuela. Hey, Dawn and Virginia, how are you doing? We're, We're doing great. Well. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me because you know I love to talk about math, especially math with early learners. See, this is why you're here. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited. Well, tell us a little bit about Zeno. Okay, Zeno is a Seattle based nonprofit, and we inspire kids to love math. Mm -hmm. And our mission is to increase kids' competence and confidence around math. And we do that with uh, fun and engaging math activities. Okay. So uh, why games? Why do you all focus on that? Well, games are fun, which is a big component for mm -hmm. Zeno. We, uh -huh. we want math to be fun for early learners because we don't want them to be turned away mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. Right. And games are also an excellent vehicle for getting mathy stuff into the home. Mm -hmm. And we feel like, uh, just like the literature movement tried to get books into the home, yeah. that it's really important for families to have mathy stuff that they can kind of flirt with different math concepts around. Yeah. And it's really, it's really, it's not homework. Mm -hmm. We really believe it should remain fun mm -hmm. and it's more about exposure as a path to achievement. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the play, right? The game is the play. It's all about the play and keeping that, that fun learning that, you know, happens through play. For kids, work is play. Mm -hmm. That's, That's exactly so what we think in early yes. childhood, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and then there's a social-emotional component to games. We know from research that um, the uh, parent-child or adult-child mm -hmm. interaction, the important adult in a child's life, sort of that face-to-face -face interaction is really critical. It kind of sparks um, brain development mm -hmm. and um, kids know that their family is interested in math, they're interested in math. I mean, the same thing happens with reading. All mm -hmm. Zeno is saying, sometimes in that interaction in a family, can, can, the, can the content be about math? We think that's very powerful for kids mm -hmm. and will help build their foundation in their math building. Um, so what learning happens when we play games specifically? Well, so this particular game is called More, Less, or Equal. Okay. And in this game, we learn uh, about comparisons. Okay. Um, and kids are learning a lot about more in their life, in their everyday life. They want more food. They yes. want more toys. They know yeah. when they don't have more. <laughs> and so all of the games do focus on uh, an objective. And those objectives are tied to teaching strategies gold. Mm. And, um, you know, we used to think that kids couldn't learn math very early on. Piaget kind of said, you know, wait till six or seven when they have some developmental mm -hmm. pieces in place. But really, they can be exposed to anything at a very young age. Yes. And it is really about exposure mm -hmm. as a path to achievement, not about mastery. Mm -hmm. All the games are kind of constructed the same way. So this is the family card. Okay. And on the family card, we're going to talk about right now, explore and play. And we've already talked about that a little bit. The explore part is free play. So it's very open-ended. Mm -hmm. The child gets exposed to the materials. And I'm going to let you guys can be fake kids for a little while. All right, can I play? I, I, always, <laughs> start, I always start out <laughs> by giving the materials to the children and just okay. letting them touch them, feel them, and see what they might do. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is kind of, I'm kind of the guide on the side. And I would be saying things to you like, oh, Dawn, I see that you're making a pattern. Mm. Pink, purple, pink, purple. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of naming and giving words to what they're doing, words they may not know, right? right? And I would say, Virginia, I see that you're building some towers. 
with your um, blocks. And one of your towers is one block taller than your other ah, tower. Right? Yes. And I'm not even looking for the child necessarily to speak. I'm just giving words to what they're doing. So your teacher move during exploration is just to talk about what's happening. Yep. Describe it and using mathy words. Yep. Using a lot of mathy words that apply because math is a language like any other language. Mm -hmm. And you learn the words by hearing the words. And you may not master them right away, but as you hear them more and more, it will make sense uh, what their meaning is. Ugh. So important. So important. And kids love it. I mean, that engagement is already there just with the materials. And that's wonderful yeah. to capitalize on that first. And so the other piece of Explore is just getting, giving the kids a chance to just play with mm -hmm. the materials in a free way so that when you move to the more structured, guided play, they're able to focus better. And, on, and all the games are sort of multiple access points. But if you wanted to play this in one of the more structured ways, you would just lay out two cards. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe I would say something like, oh, why don't you put five of your cubes on this? And Dawn, why don't you put f four of your cubes on the four card? And in a guided play, the opportunity I have is to do little scaffolding teaching as, as we play the game. So maybe a child might miscount the, the cubes. And I, I wouldn't necessarily correct them, but when I was counting my card, I would just be careful to show one-to-one -one correspondence. Mm -hmm. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four. So they're seeing me count that way, and eventually they will learn from that and incorporate it into their counting. Oh, that's such a helpful point about the accuracy. Right, for toddlers, I'm not concerned about accuracy. Right. You're not really concerned about accuracy, and we're back to that fun piece. If I correct you enough times, you're going to be like, this game is not fun. I'm done. <laughs> they keep calling this stuff math. I do not like math, and I don't want to be near it anymore. So um, sort of as parents and teachers, your, your motivating principles are keeping it fun, mm. following the child's lead. Mm. And so the next phase of this game is we have our more or less die, okay. and one of you can roll it, and then we're going to ask the question that's okay. related to that. So it landed on more, okay. and so I'm going to say which card has more. I'm actually not going to say which person has more because I want to stay away from competition. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just ask, if it was just you and me, I'd say, hey, Dawn, let's just talk about which card has more. Um, this one. This one, and then another really important practice that we have in all our games is to ask questions as you go along and to ask open-ended questions. So I'm going to say, well, how do you know that's more? Uh, well, because I can count. One, two, three, four, five. And yes, and so I'm getting Dawn now to have practice about saying what's inside her head. And I'm also mm -hmm. getting to see where she is in the learning process, mm -hmm. in the developmental mm -hmm. path along comparison. So I'm saying, okay, Dawn's a counter. Mm. The next time I play this game, I'm going to maybe take some higher numbers and see where her counting, mm -hmm. how far you can count, like where maybe it breaks down and where I could offer you some help. Okay. But kids can play this game. There's another sort of earlier path, earlier point on the developmental path where you're a non-counter mm -hmm. and you're doing your comparisons in a different way. So maybe I can't count, mm -hmm. but uh, I worked with one child and I said, how did you know, how did you know that? this five was more and they just picked this cube up and said to me like that and they're like obviously there's one more over yeah, there than here. I can visually see that. Yep and yeah. some kids they supertized. they supertized. Yep yeah. yep so actually a pretty a pretty good skill to have Absolutely. in your back pocket yeah. and then some kids will just pick them up and this one's a tough one but when there's a huge difference mm -hmm. like a one and a five I just mm -hmm. know there's more because this feels like more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and kids will build towers and do comparison or they will do one-to-one -one matching and say yeah you know um, that there's more on one side than and the other. And left over. Right. Okay. Correct. So um, th that's the explore and play section of um, more, less, or equal. And if I really, if I ha feel like a kid is ready to go further, like you were, you counter you, <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't I so. actually go to 15 immediately, but I would gradually um, include more difficult numbers. So this makes me think about like the teacher moves or strategies teachers can do when they're trying to play games. If they wanted to create a game on their own, um, what are some teacher moves or strategies that teachers could do um, when thinking about games or planning for games? Well, if they're trying to make their own game, and teachers know this, you really want to pick an attractive material mm. or something that your child is very interested in. Um, I'm going to look at some of the simple math concepts, and I'm going to focus on one that I want to, that I want to um, 
expose the child to. So on this one, we were focusing comparisons. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to say we slipped in a few other things like one-to-one -one correspondence, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that uh, cardinality, mm -hmm. that, you know, when you count, it stays the same. It's mm -hmm. five mm -hmm. all the time. It doesn't mm -hmm. change because you turned your back. It's still five, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> and so, um, so uh, think of the concept you want to explore. Think of a, uh, uh, a math, mathy stuff type thing that kids really love. Mm -hmm. And then, um, probably avoid competition initially. Yeah, yeah. And teachers know their kids well. Some kids love competition and they feed on it, but be aware of that. And then um, I would say start out simply and then build on the child's knowledge mm -hmm. that you're either working with. Well, and I think that's another strength of these games, right? Like there's opportunities to do cardinality, subitizing, comparing. I have my choice when I'm doing this, so it's a matter of like where that child is at right, exactly. and what you maybe want to focus on. And if you know all those concepts already, it's your choice to, to determine like when and how you do it. But this game is multiple opportunities to do all of those. And, and another piece we haven't even talked about, if you're teaching in a small group, you show your way, I show my way, mm -hmm. and you show your mm -hmm. way, and we're recognizing that there's multiple ways. Yeah. And maybe eventually I like your way better, Dawn, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe your way is more efficient, but kids get to see that there's multiple ways mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. figure out a solution. Oh, we love that concept development. Yep. Love that. Love that. <laughs> yep. One of the other things I want to make sure everybody knew about was many of these are available on your website. That's correct. I went on there and I think there's like 12 of them are up there right now. Oh, and you'll be able to uh, print out any cards that are associated with the games that have cards. And you'll be able to do the instructor cards and the family cards. And uh, if there's way that you, ways that you can share this with your families, that's very powerful in addition to doing the work in the classroom. And you all also have these available in multiple languages. Somali, Chinese, Vietnamese, and uh, Spanish. Oh, that's great. And actually, we have a footage of a Xeno math game in action. Let's go to our See It in Action correspondent. Hi, as you might know, my name is Sid Elise and I'm a kid correspondent for Circle Time Magazine. Today, the kids in the video will be learning about measurement. They are going to be playing this foot game. <laughs> I. And in the end, I will show you what I can do with the foot game. <laughs> Roll it! Five, six, let's put one more, we're not there yet. Oops. Seven, thanks Jojo. We'll put Jojo's foot out there. Eight, Eight. let's put another foot out there. Mm. Nine, <gasps> are we there? How many steps will we need? A lot or a little? A little. A little? You think not very many steps? A lot. Gabby thinks a lot of steps? Let's count and find out. You guys, let's start here at the fish tank. Get your feet over here by the fish tank. Okay. And this time we're going to use our real feet to count, okay? So let's look at the piano. Two feet. And let's count how many it takes to get there. Three feet. Four. Wow. That looked like they had a lot of fun. You know, this one makes me remember of a time when I was at a restaurant and I was at my table and there's a trash can and I decided to count how many feet it took so I took feet, my feet and I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then all the way to 24. I hope you want to try it. Bye! I love our Seed in Action correspondent. Me too! <laughs> So, Manuela, since this is one of the Xeno math activities, what do you think about that footage? Uh, the metric game is a great game yeah. for kids. It, it really relates to them and, you know, all of us, but especially young learners. If you relate it to them and their own personal experience, sort of a real life thing, yeah. that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Kids also like to take those feet and use them to measure themselves. Mm -hmm. They can measure their growth over the year. They can measure their size compared to another classmate. Mm -hmm. um, that that uh, is a very powerful and fun activity. Well, and it's such a great family child care activity, right? Multiple ages right. can do that same activity together, and they're just learning different things from it. Right. So, so prediction and estimation are sort of this always easy backdoor thing you yeah. have here when, you, when you're doing any math activity. Predict, measure, check, predict again, mm -hmm. and it's actually a learned uh, skill. You, you, don't, you're not, you don't become a better predictor or estimator unless you do predict and estimate mm -hmm. and get feedback mm -hmm. on 
how your first prediction was. See, and that, that worked. Great. It showed. Yep. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Manuela. Thanks, Virginia. Thanks, Dawn. I really love being here. Oh, thank you for being here. Next, we have our featured guest, Liz Wimmer, who's a curriculum writer and will help us connect games to measurement. <laughs> Hi guys! Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm excited to talk to you about measuring and how to make that fun in the classroom. Yes. Absolutely. We've been talking about math games and one of those connections is you can measure the results of a game. Exactly. What we most want to be doing with young children is helping them understand the underlying concepts. Mm -hmm. And that's really building number sense mm -hmm. and understanding the relationship of numbers to one another. Mm -hmm. And with measuring, that is really talking about measurable attributes. Okay. And when we think about this ruler, two that come to mind are the weight of the ruler mm -hmm. and the length of the ruler. Okay. So but children are really doing this, young children are doing this intuitively. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that children are probably aware of is, is their size because they're small. Right. And <laughs> that's one of the first things they want to know is when will they be bigger? Right. What is my size compared to someone else? Right. Is my cookie the same size as someone else's cookie? Does someone have more than I do? Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> it's bigger than mine. Um. <laughs> so that's one of the first interests in yeah, measuring. Right. Absolutely. So what, we're, what we want to do in early childhood is to just help children explore, give them lots of opportunities mm -hmm. to explore these attributes. Mm -hmm. So in this example, we have a little boy who's sorting his elephants, okay. and he's got them lined up from his smallest to his largest. And then another example would be um, when we're talking to children about using a quiet voice inside or a loud voice that's okay outside. Yes. We're talking about sound, and when we're talking about sound being quiet and loud. Right. So those are our two examples. It is measurement. I'm yeah, just worried about the volume. And I'm trying to use some you know, behavior management tool to control volume, but that we're, we're really measuring. Right. So children are learning about these attributes all the time. Yeah. So we can do this in games, too. Mm -hmm. um, if we think about even the most simple games, like peekaboo, mm -hmm. um, right. when you're, yeah, you're, they're <laughs> learning that two hands are about equal to the size of one face. Right. Um, things that make the game fun, like how fast you move your hands away or how oh, slow, yeah, it's yeah. velocity. Yes. And if we think about a game for older children, like do you know the game Freeze? Yes. Oh, Freeze dances yes. everything in my daughter's <laughs> kindergarten classroom. Yeah, it's a fun game, so <laughs> that's when it, an adult plays the music and children are moving around until the music stops. And of course the fun part of the game is you don't know how long the oh, music's going to go. Yeah. It could be short or it could be long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. You could start also bringing in language, short, long, fast, slow. Yeah, yeah. So this helps make the learning visible and mm -hmm. helps children learn to communicate about what they're, what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. So let's watch these two clips where we watch some educators doing this. Great. Coming over. Yeah, you see your shoe, you're trying to get closer. Get another book. Keep going. You want to look, look at this book? Okay. So also in this book, they're going on a picnic, and there's some things we're going to maybe think about in this book. We'll think about words like light and heavy and full and empty. So what did you guys see? Well, I saw the teacher in the first video with the infant say, closer. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the, te the teacher is calling out what the, what the infant's doing and talking about distance. You can yeah. get closer or farther to where you're going. That's a great example of what we mean by talking about measuring concepts with infants. Right. We are talking. We're exposing. We're yes. describing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. And then in the second one, we saw the teacher pre-teaching some vocabulary words when she was reading a book, and they're mm -hmm. related to measurement. Mm -hmm. So I think she said full and empty mm -hmm. is one mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. So as we get into preschool, we can help children be more exact about their measuring ideas, mm -hmm. and we can introduce this idea of units of measure. Okay. And I think that already came up on your show. And we're talking about non-standard units of measure. Mm -hmm. So these would be just things you find around your environment that are uniform mm -hmm. and helping children use those as their kind of first measuring tools. Okay. So an example I brought is very common activity, um, yeah. go on a leaf hunt with your preschoolers. Mm -hmm. right. So instead of making an art activity, you might make this into a math yeah. one. Um, and you could have some 
uh, an array of possible units of measure mm -hmm. they could choose. And so in this case, I did five cotton balls, mm -hmm. and I counted these buttons. I've got 13. Okay. Um, so you could say that um, one length of one leaf equals five cotton balls or 13 buttons. And mm -hmm. if they get a lot of practice with this kind of idea, then they're building this knowledge of that if you have a smaller thing, you need more of them, and if you have a larger thing, you have less of them. Right, that's a great opportunity for critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so this is a first exposure to some ideas that they're going to counter again, say, when they learn fractions. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yes. Yep. So on the table here is another unit of measure. Yeah. Um, I chose something really easy to mm -hmm. find, pieces of paper. And there's a couple other embedded math concepts. Um, there's rectangles. Mm -hmm. um, there's a pattern. There is. Green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow. And we're going to use this to play a game. Which car is going to go farther on the Ooh. pieces of paper? All right. I've been waiting for this. All right. <laughs> so if you have advanced, if you want to teach some advanced concepts, you could think of these each unit of green, blue, and yellow as one unit, so you could kind of do groups of three. Oh. Did my car go in the first group of three or the second group of three? But that would sort of be an advanced idea. Well, sure, sure. Another thing you could do is add graphing. Um, so we could chart how far each car goes, mm -hmm. and then we could use it for discussion later. Great. Do so you guys want to try this? Yes, absolutely. That's how you individualize this. It's a great idea for family child care, right? Like you're pointing out the different uh, learning that can happen as a result of this one activity. Yeah. Lots of different levels for this. And degree. different age groups, like toddlers just want to put the cars through the little tube. <laughs> so four and a half, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Trying to go further. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's put out. So our graph gives us a discussion point we, mm -hmm. where we can compare the results. So let's see, how did each car do? Well, we get less than, more than, and equal to, yeah. which is kind of cool. We get yeah. an opportunity to see that and describe that. Yeah, so this is a this is what um, an investigation where we graphed mm -hmm. our results and sort of also, we, we call it a game, but it's also like a science investigation. And that's mm -hmm. what scientists do so that they can talk about what they did and also we lead to new investigations if I hold the tube up higher or if oh. if I design my car differently yeah, so yeah. this is a big great learning tool man oh, wonderful. thank you Liz I so appreciate how you made measurable more concrete for infants toddlers and preschoolers right we understand more about how to use that type of language how infants toddlers and preschoolers are understanding measurement concepts right. and that's so helpful for us and how to make it so fun Yes. It's all the fun stuff you're already doing. You're just, you're just identifying it more as, as measurement. Oh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you. Now it's time for Circle Time Magic. Circle Time Magic is a quick, helpful tip for Circle Time. Let's watch this video. My standard says, I can measure how long things are. Can you repeat that after me? Say, so I can measure how long things are. Who can tell me? What do we have to measure? What, Mr. Aiden? We, South people, what was that, Mr. Aiden? See if, a, see if a, a wall is big enough to live in. See if a wall is big enough to live in? A wall? A worm. A, a, we can measure a worm. That's a very good one. What else could we measure? Yes. Uh, we can measure a snake. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Measure. Measure. Oh, I love the hands. I love the hands. I love them. Awesome job. Yes, babe. Sometimes people go to the doctor. And the uh, doctor measures them. Very good. Sometimes hey. you go to the doctor, and the doctor measures exactly. you. Very good. So in that clip, the magic is what the teacher is doing in circle. So one of the things that she does is she increases participation by asking the kids to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And she pays attention to the positive when she says, I love to see those hands. Mm -hmm. The teacher is also linking knowledge in the activity by asking children about things that they've measured. And the children are engaged, and they're making predictions. So next it's time to try it out. Kelly is back to share some measurement tools with us. Hi Kelly.
Kelly. Hi, how are you guys? We're great, thanks for being here. Of course. We are so excited to see what you brought for us today. Yes, I brought some measurement, um, different materials for okay. us to talk about today that we can use in our classroom. First thing I brought for us is a balance scale. Yeah. And this balance scale is a little bit different than um, the ones that you typically see mm -hmm. in classrooms. This one is a weighing balance mm -hmm. scale. So mm -hmm. when you press things down, it weighs how many pounds or ounces it is. And this you most typically will see at like a grocery store yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're weighing your fruits and vegetables. So this is kind of a fun novel thing to add to your classroom because mm -hmm. it's not something that all children get to see every day. Right. Um, and this actually has a lot of different uses. This you can put in your dramatic play area. What a oh. great idea. Yeah, yeah, so you can, you know, weigh your fruits and vegetables there. Yeah. It can be a grocery store. You could... Um, weigh different items in the classroom like small items or big mm -hmm. items and then you could graph your results possibly oh, yeah. so that's a really great um, addition to your classroom for you sure. You could take this outside too can't you? Oh definitely yeah, yeah. I mean put yeah. some rocks in it. Yes yes, yes. on a nature nature walk yeah. you could add some rocks or leaves see how much stuff weighs absolutely Very great cool. idea awesome. yeah. And so you can actually make your own scale at home or in your own classroom check out this video on how to do that. All right, great. That's an excellent balance scale, and that's super cool that preschoolers could probably do that on their own. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, they have a lot of ownership over. So that's a really, right. really great way to uh, make your own balance. And preschoolers would be so creative about what they put on the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, plates, totally. Buckets, mm -hmm. whatever they could think whatever they could hold up. Whatever, whatever, yeah. <laughs> the next thing I brought is a tape measure, and okay. this is, you know, something that a lot of classrooms have, and there's lots of different versions of mm -hmm. this. There's this big, huge, big plastic one yeah. that's, you know, super yeah, novel, yeah. super sturdy. enticing, sturdy. Mm -hmm. This is great for infants and toddlers to yeah. use as well. Um, there's also just ones you can get at like Home Depot, the regular tape measures. Mm -hmm. There's also even like the paper ones from Ikea. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, those free, free ones. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, those ones <laughs> <Like> are free. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use a tape measure in so many different ways. You can, you know, lay it out around the classroom. They can measure everything in the classroom. Yeah. Um, super high interest. You can... Uh, measure, you know, the bookshelf, the bookshelf goes to 17, and you could even like label the bookshelf with mm -hmm. a 17. Um, you can measure how tall your friends are, yeah. you can measure yes. how tall your, or how big your foot is, yeah. or your Hair. hands, exactly, mm -hmm. you compare with other people. So this is a really right. great addition to the classroom. Love that. Absolutely, and kind of going along with the tape measure is, if you don't have a tape measure, or it's not something that you want to use, mm -hmm. or another way to use it, is just getting some ribbon. So oh. this is kind of like the non-standard way to right. use this. So this has the numbers written on it, but this won't have numbers, but you can still go around and measure everything. Um, something that preschoolers love to do is you can cut it yourself, oh, yeah. cut how big the ribbon is, and mm -hmm. then you can also compare the different sizes of the ribbons, yes, which one's great. bigger, which one's smaller. So this is another great way to do some non-standard measurement. You can go around, you can do your mm -hmm. arm, you yeah, can do your leg, absolutely. you can put two friends yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can mirror the circumference of yeah, things. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be, right. Yeah, totally. Wonderful. So there's that as well. Um, the next thing I have is a couple of different collections. Mm -hmm. um, this first collection is um, just some big, huge plastic mm -hmm. jars. And these ones actually have some uh, measurements written on the side. And it's really great because it's both in metric and standard measurements mm -hmm. that are written on the sides here. Um, so these are really a uh, super great way. These actually nest into each other so they don't take up tons and tons of room. Um, but if this is not something you have or something that you um, are willing to purchase, you can just use jars. Yeah. So every, most people have jars. You can use plastic, you can use glass. 
Um, so different collections of jars to scoop and pour things. You can put bird seed in here. Yeah. You can put pom-poms. You can put yeah. water. You can put oh. anything in these. Mm -hmm. um, uh, something that I like to do with these is use um, our measuring cups. So I have a set of measuring cups and a set of measuring spoons. Mm -hmm. And you can just make, you know, one scoop. You can put one scoop into uh, each of them yeah. and see how that looks different. Right. Um, you can count how many it takes to fill up it all the way up for mm -hmm. full and empty. That's awesome. And I love that you said you could use like bird seeds or cotton balls, like yeah. different yeah. size you things to see exactly. how that fits the different containers in a different yeah. way. You or, can even estimate awesome. like how many yes. would oh, fit into a jar. That's right. So that's a great one. Another fun thing that I like to do with jars is, you know, pouring from one wow. jar into mm -hmm. another. So how many of this jar will fit into this oh, one? Or if you use this really big jar and you pour it out, mm. is it going to fit into it or is it going to overflow? So there's a lot of great prediction that you can also do yeah, with yeah. a lot of these activities. Well, and so many ways to do volume, right, right with exactly. all these things, mm -hmm. and then graphing that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just going to say is you can also graph all of your results, yeah. and especially if you're doing some estimating beforehand, mm -hmm. estimate, like, what did you estimate versus what actually, how much was in there. So that's yeah. a really great way to see that, too. I love this idea of the graphing. Yes, and so I have this really huge, fun novel so graphing. Fun. This is like a big, huge <laughs> vinyl graphing chart. Yeah. And so this is obviously something that you might not have, but this is something you could make for your classroom. Um, this particular one is dry erase. Mm. Um, so it has the nice uh, marks on it. So you can use it either horizontally or vertically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you could use where if you want to say like do a poll of like whose favorite what's your favorite colors along the top and children could maybe put a picture of themselves yeah, here or yeah. you know a flower or depending Stickers. on whatever your theme is or a sticker exactly yeah. and you can kind of use this with everything we've talked about so far absolutely. you can graph any of this any of this you can graph absolutely and then another great way is if you turned it vertically you could even do um, like a growth chart in the classroom oh, class. that that, that could idea. that you could leave posted in the classroom. So that's a really great way to do that um, as well. And do it all year long. Yeah. All year like long. At yep, the end absolutely. of the year, oh. it could totally be like a monthly thing, or you know, every couple of weeks type thing. Whatever your kid's interest is. A concrete way to answer how tall am I? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was here and now I'm there. <laughs> yes. And then actually, this on the other side has a really great. Um, Venn diagrams mm -hmm. on this side and so oh, this again so cool. has the dry erase marker so you can do your comparing and contrasting mm -hmm. and what do they have in common and what's different yeah. um, between that. So that's just kind of a, a fun novel um, activity for, for this really fun uh, useful yeah, plastic thing. Very yeah, cool. I mean it's so good for a whole group like circle time. Absolutely. This is outside mm -hmm. you can take yeah. this. Yes, especially because it is vinyl like if it gets wet that's fine. Yeah. You can erase, rewrite, you can do tons of different things with that. Oh, yeah, I love that thing. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, the last thing I brought us is um, a clock. Learning how to tell time is obviously going to come a little bit later, yes, yes. but um, learning, you know, the, the different parts of the clock, there's the, you know, the long hand and the short hand, the hours mm -hmm. and the minutes. Um, the kids can move it where they yeah. want. Mm -hmm. um, a great way to incorporate it into, like, your daily routines is if, you know, it's, you know, 1140 right now. We're going to eat lunch at 12. Mm -hmm. How many minutes mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, count the minutes, measure how much time it is before that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so you can also, a fun thing is you can count by fives, you can count by Ooh. ones, you can count by tens. Right. So there's a lot of different ways you can count in mm -hmm. here too, um, based on the children's interests and their needs. So that's a, this is a great addition to your classroom too. You know, speaking of uh, time, we have this great behavior management minute clip where a child and a teacher are using a timer to manage some behavior. So let's take a look. Okay, so remember, but you and Dustin made a plan. So when the timer's done, you get to touch. This is her turn to touch, okay? So, is that gonna work for you? Do you wanna wear this to remind you? Yeah. Okay, you can wear this and so you can say, oh yeah, look, I set the timer, okay? So Charlie, Dustin and um, Carrie Ann have a plan right now, and when the timer's done, Dustin gets a little bit of turns, okay? Hang so we'll make it all. So we're gonna wait. <laughs> wanna maybe ask Carrie Ann to check out the timer? Carrie Ann, what's happening with the timer? It's gone. Oh, so look, look at your friend. 
Carrie Ann? Oh, he's offering you the necklace that you can wear it now. So Carrie Ann and Dustin, I'm going to remind you that we have about five more minutes for cleanup, and then we're going to go to do some small group, okay? About five more clean, five more minutes. So do you need the timer for five more minutes? Which one's five? Show me five. Yep. So what's going to happen when the timer's gone? When the red is all gone? What's going to happen? It's clean up. You're right. Yep. Okay. So that worked very well in that classroom, right? Yes, <laughs> it absolutely did. And I think it worked really well in this video because those are preschooler age children yeah. who have had some practice because this is later on in the year and they've kind of understood the routine and understood how to use the timer mm -hmm. with, with their peers. And this really is about managing the time. That's mm -hmm. the behavior management strategy here. So ways you might think about managing time with toddlers is by having a schedule, a predictable schedule like we just talked about maybe with this clock, you're mm -hmm. adding um, consistent times on there and getting toddlers used to what to do at certain times. And then even with infants, a predictable schedule comes with uh, more around routine. So it's consistent feeding, playing, changing, sleeping, and that provides a sense of security. So the idea of managing time is a good behavior management minute strategy. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for of coming course. and bringing all this yes, wonderful measurement absolutely. material. We are so excited to try it out. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> next, we're going to look at some books in our next segment called Don't Just Read It, Mathematize It. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Dawn. How are you? I'm great. Good. I am super excited to be back here this Thank time you. for yes. more books. All right. Yes. More books about math. So I have some really fun books today to talk about. I want to show you all what I've got because they all relate to measurement okay. in different ways. Mm -hmm. And they can go from different ages. Hmm, so great. we're going to start with one of our favorites. So guess oh. how much I love you. Love it. Right? This is just one so of our much. very favorites. Yes. It reminds me when my babies were little. Yes. It reminds me when I was teaching. So this is a fantastic book to um, read to those little kids, mm -hmm. those little toddlers, and introduce the concept of measurement. So yeah. in this book, it's how much. Mm -hmm. So of course, big nut brown hair is showing little nut brown hair. How much he loves so little much. nut brown hair. So right, <laughs> using the arms, using the arms up here, mm -hmm. over here. So lots and lots of ways to kind of describe how much. Yeah, and so much language, right? Like that's so what we want with language. infants. We want to expose you to the expose language, them. so you're hearing those concepts. Exactly, so much great language, that layering on of those vocabulary words early, early on. Our next book is called Making graphs, oh, right? Fantastic. So this is a really fantastic book. There's a whole series of these books that are called Math World. Okay. Um, so this one is about graphs, and graphs is so fun mm -hmm. for children in the classroom to talk about graphs and learn about right. graphs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just basically it's showing a way to show information that mm -hmm. you that you um, get. So. This one, I'm going to show you, it's called a picture graph. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's so great if you're a toddler. Yes. I can understand pictures. Right, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. A picture graph. So this is, you know, what is the favorite flavor of ice cream in the classroom? It's a very important question. It's a very important question. Right? Question. Very important <laughs> question. So it's described with pictures. So you've got maybe little children who are not yet reading words, mm -hmm. but certainly they can look at how many ice cream cones. Yes. You've got children with developmental delays mm -hmm. who, again, can look at this and you know do some counting of pictures, looking at the pictures and knowing what they mean. Right. All right. So a great thing in the back. Don't worry if you need a little brush up on your <laughs> graphing <laughs> skills. I know I did. How do I describe a tally chart? How do I describe yeah. the word interpret? How do we interpret data mm -hmm. um, for little kids? Um, so right here. Glossary. That's so great. All teachers. your novel words. Right. All of it right there. You can't go wrong. No, right. And if you're playing a game, I love that this book is so, you can reference it, right? So if kids mm, are yes. using, playing a game or doing something, you can say, hmm, let's make a graph. Which graph do you want to use? Right, right. Which graph do you want to use, right? You can flip to all these pages. You can look at all the graphs. What game are you playing? And how mm -hmm. might you interpret that information into a picture? Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. Perfect. It's a really great way to do it. Okay, this is a great, great book. It's called Just a Little Bit. And this is a really fun book because it's a story. Mm. 
it has a problem in the story. Okay. There's a problem that these friends need to solve. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a great book to talk about difference. Elephant and mouse both want to play together. Mm -hmm. They're clearly different sizes. Yes. They want to have fun on the seesaw, oh. right? The teeter-totter. So how could they do that when mouse is so little and elephant weighs a lot more than mouse so poor elephant is down on the ground how can we get elephant up here an elephant doesn't lose hope just a little bit more i just need a little bit more <laughs> right so all of these animals help solve this problem for the two friends that they want to play together and the little bit more is actually the beetle that comes and lands on mouse's nose <laughs> and provides that little bit more of weight Aww. so that elephant then can go up that is so sweet right it's super, super cute. All of our friends working together to yeah, solve the problem. Yeah, working together for the, you know, the good of friendship, right? <laughs> we want to play on the seesaw. Oh, so that's sweet. a really, really fun book. All right, the last book I'm going to show you is called Weigh It. Mm -hmm. And this book is great for those kids who are ready for a little bit more, a little bit higher level concepts. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about kilograms, mm -hmm. we talk about ounces, we talk about different measurements in different countries. Yeah. What we use here in America, what they use overseas. So right. it's a really great book. And it's small um, enough so you could have it in any kind of area of your classroom. Yeah, you yeah, could put yeah. it in your dramatic play you could put it in your science area mm -hmm. um, and you know the pictures are great so a bull how much does a bull weigh right how many kilograms how many right. tons so it's a really great way for those kids again there is a glossary in oh, the back love, the love those Fantastic. glossaries right <laughs> that's a great and I love how these books have reinforced a lot of measurement concepts, right? In many different yes. ways, right? Like there's a book on time, there's a yes. book on weight, like there's a book that helps you understand and reinforce right. some of the ways that you can do this and helps you think about conversations and questions. Absolutely, you can ask. absolutely. And all of these books you can take little concepts from and grow them out in different activities. Yeah, nice. And I also noticed that many of these are from the library. They are. Almost all of these yeah. are from the library, so no need to go out and, and purchase mm -hmm. new books. A lot of these can be found at the library. Um, it just takes a moment to peek and, and ask the librarian about measurement books, and we got all of those at the library. Yeah. So there you have it. Thank you. All right. So much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So up next, it is time for our It's All About You segment. <laughs> Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks ah, for being here. I love having you here. So resilience and wellness is really important because to the teaching field because there's often high turnover and especially in the early childhood field we need to find some ways to keep our teachers and keep them healthy and well. So some of the ways that we try to do this is we include um, ways to honor the profession, mm -hmm. offer tools to manage stress, promote resiliency, and to increase human effectiveness. And that's why we're so happy to have Heather Floyd as our guest for this segment because she embodies both resiliency and wellness mm -hmm. and was an amazing coach to educators yeah. and was a former teacher as well. So we're very excited to have her on to share her knowledge and expertise with us. Well, you know, it takes a lot of time to mm -hmm. build your practice. And I think um, for me, one of the most successful things was having somebody that could talk, I could talk with about the ideas mm -hmm. I was having or who could help me understand how to implement mm -hmm. things that I was being told to do. Mm -hmm. um, so having a great role model and building that social relationship with somebody that cares about and is passionate about teaching children yeah. is a really great way to help build your resiliency and to help you have a good sense of well-being. Oh, I mean, that's one of the reasons we like to do this. Like, it's a time to collaborate and right. you could have your own circle time with your social supports. Yes, definitely. And it's so important, especially in the field that we're in, because those children take so much out of us that to be able to refill our own sense of, um, I guess it's refill your bucket, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, is, a, is a really good thing to do with those social relationships that we can surround ourselves with. So what about those uh, teachers that are in family child cares? Family child care is a little more tricky. Yeah. Sometimes I think there's a couple teachers in the in the house, but not always. Mm -hmm. So tapping into the social um, relationships that you have access to. Mm -hmm. So families, parents, mm -hmm. caregivers, mm -hmm. um, maybe even connecting with some people through maybe Circle Time Magazine and, oh, yeah. and trying to build some relationships and some, some contact so that you can have somebody to reflect with and somebody to, to really talk about how we're gonna implement and how we're gonna build strong learners. 
Uh, this is a helpful teaching move to establish some social, port, social supports and identify good role models. Thank you, yeah, it was great for me, so. Well, thank you so much for sharing all those wonderful tips with us. You're welcome, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now it's time to wrap up. Let's review our learning objectives. We learned a lot about games today and that there are fun ways to provide access to math and create more learning and practice opportunities. And hopefully you're walking away with more ideas on how math measurement fits into math and how young children are understanding it and with lots of activities to try out. We'd love to get your feedback and there's a link to an evaluation on this site. Please complete it and you can receive STARS credit. Thanks for joining our Circle Time with us. Wait, is the video still going? Wow. Wait, what? Hi! Oh. Hi.